Hello. Hello. Snack time is over. Jeez, I gotta make sure I don't hit some terms of service stuff with this tank top. Hold on. There we go. Ugh. I just wanna eat snacks forever. I hope y'all can forgive me. Welcome to another Girl by Moonlight development stream starring me as well as you, the chat, and you, the YouTube commenters. Welcome. So, we're in the very early stages of the, of the crew sheet. Um, I have some very general ideas about what's going to go where and what needs to be on it. Um, and that's about it. Um, so I'm stoked to have a bunch of y'all here to talk about this with. So, a good place to start is to look at the, just like the Blades crew sheet, which I've got a screenshot of underneath here as just a point of reference. Sorry, I'm going to, seasonal allergies, just give me a moment. Okay, so stuff on this that I'm excited about. Something something like the claims map, although this I'm pushing more in the direction of, I don't know if you ever heard Adam talking about uh, Womb of Night, but doing something kind of like that, where it's not like territory, it's like you have, in this case it would be like your hideout, and you get to upgrade and add stuff to your hideout. So it's less a map of stuff that is already out there in the world and available for you to claim, but it's uh, about like upgrading and expanding upon something. Um, so that one's important. Uh, the hunting ground style thing, so the prompts I think are really good. Um, and I can, I've played around with incorporating those into my game and what those would look like. So I've got those listed here. Um, we need a section for crew XP as well, which will probably be in here. Um, and then the like upgrades in this style, I don't know if I want to include. This might be too much like equipment um, for our purposes. We're probably not going to have cohorts of any kind, but I'm leaving my mind open to the possibility. Um, we're definitely going to have some like crew upgrades to the tune of these special abilities. Uh, and then one thing that we have in this that we don't have in Blades um, is I want to do the whole like Apocalypse World style prompts thing. Um, as a way of more explicitly like connecting the team together um, so this is what I'm working with so far um, having the like hideout thing and having it expand from left to right as opposed to from the middle out so it's not like what's around you it's about building this thing up Right, so hence like, I mean it's very small, but hence the decision to move to like a different, differently sized grid with less things on it, and positioning our point of origin in a different part of it. It's kind of just more like an, an upgradey kind of vibe, almost like a skill tree more so than a, you know, than a map. Um, and a bunch of these. I mean, and here's the thing, right? The other reason we're eliminating like crew upgrades is that bonuses that this kind of stuff is going to give you is going to live in this map instead now. Um, so this will have similar styles of things where you're going to go out, you're going to reclaim an object of power, which is one of the like missions that you can do. 
and that would be how you would fill this out. Um, it would be usable for other stuff as well, but like one of the things you could do with that score would be to fill out these things. So we find, you know, a power crystal that gives us a, I don't know, like a portal room, right? And then we can like take portals to places. Um, so that's kind of the mindset with this uh, little like hideout area. I'm gonna label this. Hideout. I'm labeling it in a text that is too large for this box. There we go. We don't want it to be that big. 12 point is good. Um, I guess the other thing we could do is just put this right here. It doesn't really need like a heading the way that the other sections might. So let me just do it like this. This is your hideout. I'll put it in the middle. Um, so this initial bit is kind of our situation, right? In a, in a very like burning wheel kind of way. Um, this is like, what's going on? Who are all of the antagonists, right? That's basically what this column is. This column is about the protagonists, right? So where, where does our crew kind of come from? What is our origin? Um, who are the, so this is like the whole crew. This is then everyone within the crew picks one or two that apply. I'm going to zoom in so that y'all can actually read these things. Right, so we choose an origin for the crew, we choose a role for each member of the crew, and these can be like one or two tags. So I might be a royal family member, but I'm also a lowly servant, so I'm like I have like a secret royal identity, or I might be the high priest and be a rival. Um, I might be a loyal knight who is a suitor or lover of a member of the royal family, who's one of the other characters. Stuff like that. So some little prompts to help guide you in the direction of this crew's context, right? Uh, and then obligation. This is we choose one for everyone. So are we high school students, or are we are we at a high school? Because I think there's room for people to be different folks within this structure. So like someone can be a teacher, someone can be the janitor, whatever. Um, but this is like our framing obligation: is that we have jobs, is that there's some kind of temple that we're you know. So blah, 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 we have all these options. We have a description of our space, right? Which is this down here. So what it is, and then, you know, we still have all the same upgrades for it, regardless of what it is, but how that happens is gonna look different. Um, we choose a couple of options for transcendence. I might actually move this over to a different section. Um, I didn't just move anything, okay. And then this is one that I, I left a question mark here because I'm not sure if I want to include it, but the idea of like, what is our ultimate goal? What are, where do we want to, what are we trying to accomplish? Because we have, for the baddies, we know, you know, what their nature is and what they're trying to do and where they come from. We have some stuff about the mundane world and I want to have another list here about like the culture that we're set in. So actually, I'm going to add that right now so I don't forget. The culture. Um, but this is the this is the like list choosing part, and I think given that I don't want to prescribe as much setting as Blades does. Right, like blades can forego this kind of stuff that you would see in like Apocalypse World and other uh, Powered by the Apocalypse games, because unlike those games, blades comes with a really heavy setting. Um, so we already know where we're going to be at and what it's going to be like. Um, and if we're moving outside of that, there isn't a framework for us to develop our own. Um, it's very much geared towards playing in Duskfall. Or if you're going to play somewhere else, you get a different, you know, 
context and you can get like a module for that like John Stone put out a Eruvian blades um, which should include some of that stuff right so this is why I feel the need to include it um, and I think this is the best place to put it on the crew sheet because this is kind of where we start first um, and in terms of my like flowchart of how to start playing the game this is the this is the point of origin that I recommend this is like step one and you go through this column you establish the antagonism in the setting and the situation uh, and then we talk about who we are because I think that's a really important way to frame the story um, and this is pursuant to my first play test when we were going through this stuff it was like a big mishmash it was in a totally different order all that kind of stuff so trying to like think in a structured way about like how to order this stuff and what that means for the like user experience um, was some really helpful uh, wisdom that we got out of the first playtest. So that's the idea with these and that's why they're in here even though they are not in Blades, the original, right? It doesn't have any of that shit. Um, stuff we don't need, tier, uh, rep, coin, they don't exist. Our closest equivalent um, is the investigation track over here, which we'll get into at some point. Um, so we have like, I mean, I should change this to be special abilities because that really is a better descriptor because essentially our upgrades are down here. That's what this is about. And then yeah, name up here is like the name of our crew or of our like I'm going to call it like series name. So this would be like Sailor Moon or Steven Universe or, you know, Magical Maho Shoujo Mad Madoka. Is that the full name of that show? But anyways, yeah, this is like the name of the show, essentially, because um, it's not quite pulling on the like Blades thing of like, yeah, we're the we're the eels, we're the night edge lords were the edge lords it's not like that you know magical girls don't necessarily need a, a like cool team name that is explicit within the setting um highlight there is a connection between the magical world and the mundane world which is why i've lumped them all together uh in sequence because essentially this dark bad stuff uh, permeates the mundane world and all of the monsters are reflections of the problems there and vice versa. Um, so this is all going to also, it's all in a gray background right now. It's going to be on a white background. And the idea with this is that it's pale enough that you just write over it. It's something I'm trying out. If people really don't like it on the character sheet, I'll, I'll swap it over to, you know, being a little different. So, yeah, functionally, I'm, I'm calling it hideout here. My use of language is a little bit mixed up. Maybe I should leave this blank for people to write in the, like, name for what it is. Um, but this is your space, or here, I'm going to change this to your hideout. We'll call it the hideout, and that way we'll be consistent. But, yeah, the idea is, like, so this is your hideout. You describe what your hideout is. Is it someone's house? Is it, like, a secret hideout? <laughs> like... <laughs> Um, <clears throat> in the really like classic sense, is it an ancient temple, a majestic castle, whatever? You pick one of these, and then you put it here, and or well, it is this. It is this initial square, and you're gonna upgrade it and add stuff to it. So whether that's you know if it's your house, it's like cool in the garage. We built a portal chamber. Boom. Um, you know it's the HQ for the for the crew. Um, I'm using hideout because it is a like secret or like special set aside place. But yeah, it's like the clubhouse, right? Totally. Um, a club at school should definitely be an option. It's the anime club. We meet there after school every day. Maybe pulling Scarlet out of the sheet name might loosen the problem. Scarlet? What? I don't follow. 
so yeah this is just the flavor for this whole thing um, I'm gonna write in some stuff for this so this could be like a power source and this next one could be yeah like I like the idea of there being like a portal chamber and we get to kind of decide what that means or maybe it'll have rules associated with it for now I'm just gonna put in some evocative notions um, what are some other fun like hideo things like um, a practice room so you can like train and really I'm just gonna make a list of things and we can move all these things around the hallway in the middle of a busy train station I mean I think that qualify like an overlooked place would qualify as that I don't want to get like super specific yeah like school roof shop all that kind of stuff right like a place long abandoned could be some of those places you know whatever yeah there should definitely be like a like healing crystals or something but you get to qualify what that is but like a healing space because depending we want these to be uh, open-ended enough that we can color what they actually look like and are oh it's not scarlet it's starlet but yeah um, this is one like playset essentially, uh, and there's going to be multiple different ones. So the Starlet Kingdom is like the most basic like Sailor Moon E kind of one, and that's what I want to start with. Ooh, a purification chamber. Yeah, that's a good one. It's it's less like like things like purification chamber are great because it's like this is what you do in this place, and then we can talk about like how we do that depending on whether we're going in a really like sci-fi thing a library is awesome um yeah totally because then it can be it can be a bunch of different things right oh like a lounge <laughs> i like the idea of a lounge just like actually just like a place you hang out um And then I'll worry about the, like the map and the placement of them down the line. A lounge or a kitchen. It's almost like a mess hall, which I kind of like the idea of. Lounge and kitchen. This is like a nice place for the characters to hang out. This is totally the like dollhouse playset thing. Oh, and I should zoom in. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can see it really clearly because I have this great big screen in front of me. It's hard for me to remember that it's... Mmm, yeah, some kind of like... Prison? Yeah, well, I like calling it containment area. Because the whole like... Having it explicitly be a prison is pretty, like, might be too violent for the... for the particular vibe that you're going for. I don't want to, like, force people into, you know, the, like, Madoka vibes or something. It'd be pretty rude. Yeah, I think just eliminating these little, it's not a portal chamber, it's just portal chamber, it's fine. It's a little picky kind of grammar texty thing. Just fix that. So we've got power source, purification chamber. I feel like I want to gate a lot of stuff behind power source. In terms of if we want to think of this as like a functional map, I feel like power source can go here. 
library maybe is this one or this one portal chambers at the back this is like end game stuff um maybe we put the lounge in the library like so oh yeah some kind of like workshop workshops are cool the workshop that's where you plan who you want to have relationships together yeah and so the workshop can be as a as a gateway to like the high-tech stuff um, obviously you put the containment area next to the purification chamber because those are related and that way they're kind of yeah they're totally gated by like workshoppy stuff semi magical resources um so in order to get the stuff to like make these rooms happen you can do like scores to reclaim an object of power um i don't know if y'all can see my cursor actually i'm not seeing it on my stream preview um but yes yeah, so you can reclaim an object of power you can uh, seek answers in a strange place you can cleanse a person or location and you can face a creature of darkness um, some of these will be gated by like a certain amount of investigation track stuff and so like seeking answers gets you a big investigation track payout which will then let you like get through an arc more quickly so this is like the straight up push to the end um, this lets you build up your hideout uh, or maybe do some other stuff uh, like get power-ups for your characters or, as well um, cleanse a person or location this is how you redeem people who have fallen into darkness it's also how you mess with NPCs in various ways and then facing a creature of darkness is the really direct like go fight the baddies thing um, it will be fixed in terms of the placement of Sierra Mira but it's not yet I can move them around uh, I'm just trying to fill this thing up mmm like a vault I like the idea of a vault although containment area could kind of be a vault and depending on what we want to use it for but we'll add vault in here because this could be for like holding cool shit and then the containment area is for holding bad stuff mm, yeah and I think like there will be moves for to answer your questions Deathmaster uh, there will be moves that let you be better at investigating there will be certain playbooks that are better at getting investigation progress all that kind of stuff and then hmm, a creative space also, people are saying garden. Garden is rad. Mm. Let's put garden in here next to the healing space. And then we'll add a vault in the back here. And the vault. Vault is going to give you like cool, fancy kit or something. Okay, we've already got a lounge with a kitchen and a garden. What more do people want? You want tea areas? God, no, it's too much. But this would be the most toyetic part of the game, obviously. You'd be able to buy the playset by Mattel. That would include all the different hideout modules. Or no, you'd have to buy them. You'd start with the hideout, and then it would have all these expansions that you could buy. Yeah, so the vault is like about kitting out your squad with cool, sh cool shit. The portal chamber lets you like go places and maybe gives you some bonus to like engagement or towards doing certain kinds of missions um like lowering thresholds for stuff that kind of thing containment area um maybe is like a place where you can study the baddies or help you with the whole cleansing a person thing same with the purification chamber uh, these could also relate to like how quickly the darkness is able to mess with you um, making it harder for it to do that um, power source is just going to be like an, a gate for all this other stuff it's going to unlock a bunch of it we might can this little track here so you have to go hide out power source and then boom do all the other stuff but there's room to change these all up and and you know i feel like we can keep them pretty open-ended give them some mechanical effects but not tell people it has to be a certain thing in terms of the like you know fluff of the game but yeah 
So that's great. We've got at least some little stuff. We'll add some rules to them later. Um, I don't think my first playtest needs to have rules for these. Uh, certainly, I don't think we're going to get to the back end of it in a single playtest. Um, I kind of want to think about crew special abilities because these are a tricky one. So I'm just going to grab my blades crew sheets and take a look at some of the some of the stuff from blades that might be relevant. So blah, 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 boring stuff. Let's look at cult. Cult's a good one. No, that's Barlow's cult. So every, every crew sheet has one of these where it's like a set of skills that your crew is better at. This is a, this is a maybe for us. I mean, I think it makes sense to have these in the game. They're pretty fundamental. It might only be two. Uh, two skills. Um, I like these kinds of like specific supernatural, right? Like this one is an interesting move because it's like, cool, your crew is a cult. You're going to be doing culty stuff. So here's extra die to resist against the kind of culty problems that you're going to have and to heal against culty, you know, consequences. So it's like focused defensive thing. Um, pretty powerful like it gives you extra die to two different things but it's very conditional right so a move like this for our crew could be interesting we have to decide what we think the starlet kingdom is about as far as that goes um and then we can kind of frame things a little bit better. Uh, bound in darkness. You may use teamwork with any cult member regardless of the distance separating you. So this is a very... Um, this is about fictional positioning, right? And it comes at the cost of stress. So it has a price tag on it, but it lets you do this kind of lets you get around fictional positioning issues essentially um, and yeah impacting teamwork teamwork is obviously really important for this game because it's about teams I mean it's important in blades too it's any game built on blades I feel like teamwork is probably a big deal in um, unless it's drifted very far uh, each, P each PC gains an additional vice worship so Here's one that we can't really get much out of because we don't want to get additional obligations, which is our vice replacement because obligations are bad. Um, I mean, we could maybe have one where it's like you get an, you can add an extra obligation, um, which you can pursue optionally that gives you some bonus. But then in our case, it's like, like this could be like maintaining, you know, the temple grounds or whatever. And if you do that, then you get X, but it's an extra obligation, which means you take more stress um, in your downtime. Um, this is like a totally fictional one. Your deity sometimes manifests in the physical world. This is like pure fiction. If we can think of some equivalent pure fiction move, cool. I'm just looking at these moves kind of as like, what category do they represent? Um, so this interacts with a very specific move that y'all have as a cult where you're going to be doing rituals um, your cohorts have abandoned their reason to devote themselves to the cult they will undertake any service no matter how dangerous or strange they gain plus one die rolls against any of it so this is specific to cult uh, cohorts which is not really a category I want to mess around with at least not yet and then, of course, the veteran one where you can choose an ability from another crew. Um, I think I'm going to allow this. The You're never going to like change crew books in my game, I don't think. I don't think that's really a thing. And yeah, like the lair in this is equivalent to our hideout. Um, 
similar function, but again, rather than, whereas in blades, right, all of these different options that are around you, they are like, this is like the world around you. These are like physical places that are near your layer and its physical place. Um, and they are distinct from one another. Whereas in ours, it's like we have the hideout and then we expand the hideout. So it would be like if this layer thing like grew and plopped over everything else. Um, realizing that y'all can't see my cursor is really limiting my ability to point things out. It's making me sad. Can you see when I highlight things at least? Okay, good. So that's how I have to do it. So yeah, layer. And then like if, if all of this were your layer suddenly and then like all of this were your layer but in blades, these things remain as like distinct physical chunks and they come and go um, as a result of entanglements. Um, okay, so we wanna make for the default kind of setting for the game, we wanna make a plus one action rating to, I'm probably gonna do it for, to only two skills because I have way less skills in my game. Um, or way less actions in my game. Um, some kind of interesting like situational bonus, either offensive or defensive. Um, and then something about fictional positioning or something relating to teamwork. Uh, this extra, this kind of like extra obligation idea I'm on the fence about uh, whether or not I want to include it. Um, and yeah, these last ones aren't super relevant. So a move that gives us better ratings, a move that gives us a situational bonus, a move that gives us fictional positioning. A move about teamwork, an optional extra obligation, that pays out some benefit. Yeah, this is very much the like XCOM base, totally. And yeah, there are, if I recall, there's abilities like Slippery on like the shadows where they can change how many entanglements they roll, essentially skew the odds in entanglements. Um, yeah, or if you do certain kinds of missions. So yeah, like a, a mission specific bonus or a, a move about specific mission types. And yeah, I can zoom in for us here now that I'm doing just special abilities. Cool. So um, I'm going to open up our playbook as well. Right, so here's the playbook for the Guardian, which is our most like kind of core class. I bring this up so that we can look at um, our stats. So we have confess, forgive, perceive, express, embody, defy, endure, which I'm thinking of changing, empathize, and investigate. Um, and I feel like the most obvious ones are probably the best ones for this. So um, move name here. Each character may add plus one, cannot type, plus one die to one of the following actions. What is the grammar like when John does the move? Yeah, man, plus one action rating to blah. Okay, let's let's be consistent with that. Let me add 
this one action rating to uh, so we probably want to do defy He sees these cookies. I really liked your art of all the um, previous run, like season one sprawl characters. It was super good. Um, I also saw, <laughs> saw your tweets about making like the tiny spiky vest and everything, and I'm sorry that it didn't turn out in the final like JPEG version. That kind of stuff's really frustrating. Just like resolution barriers to certain like images and looks. Um, so yeah, like what are the most, you know, like fundamental stuff? I feel like it's defy and I want to spread them across multiple spots. So maybe like forgive and defy are the ones. Maybe we just do one from each section. Um, because like empathize is another really obvious one because this is a very like straight up protagonist kind of vibe. So to defy, forgive, or empathize. The max for these ratings also increases by one. Right, because that's the move. Yeah, up to a max rating of three. And yeah, he does three things. So we have three less stats than Blades characters in my game, right? Because they have three categories with four stats each. We have three categories with three stats each in Girl by Moonlight. But that's fine. I don't. I think this can just be a little bit stronger, essentially, effectively by having less stuff this gives you more impact but eh, whatever you're still only adding one die to these things um, I don't know what my max rating is going to be so I'm going to phrase it this way where it's relative because I think my max rating might actually be uh, it might bump it up to two because <laughs> we can get less total rating as well um, I gotta think of I gotta do the numbers game here, right? Because like in Blades, you can have up to four. In my game, we can also have up to four. Um, but I think that I might actually want to restructure it because basically what I was thinking is we have a max of three unless we transform, or like a max of two unless we transform. Um, so maybe I need to change this and like change the look of the dots. Um, yeah, I definitely want to do something that gives like an extra die to one of the resists, probably Moe for this one, um, as like our situational bonus move. And this would be like pure hearts, uh, each character may roll. Plus one die when rolling my um and like maybe they're better at doing the make a friend action or like the social linking action. Also get plus one die. This is like definitely not final proof here. Also get plus one die for the social link action so you're just like a little bit better at doing those things and yeah like getting your stats to four in blades is a is a crew upgrade thing i think for us here i'm gonna quickly i'm gonna quickly go over and edit this because this is a gap that i just noticed so um let's see i think these are all in the same layer yeah okay good um, so what I really want to do is somehow like code these. Here's what I'm going to do. So 
So our max for any stat is one by default up to two with that move. And then you can have extra points in here. Um, let's see here, we just want to contract by three, yeah. And then these ones that are the empty circles, you'll get to load some stats in there, but you only unlock them when you're actually transformed. These are like your transcendent ones. And in fact, I might just take this and move it out just a little bit. No, that looks goofy. Hopefully this signals well enough. Um, Yeah. So the idea is that when we are just in our regular forms, we cap out really low. Um, and then, yeah, the, the practice room claim would be our one that lets us, you know, go up another level, essentially. So we have we have a way of like absorbing that that move, essentially, or that rule. Um, a move that gives us fictional, functional, fictional positioning. Um, so we need to think about like what situations we want to favor with this uh, crew book, and this is like the very default like Sailor Moon style setting. Keeping that in mind, um, what are like ways that those kinds of characters go about solving their problems that we want to encourage. What was like the big strength of those crews, right? I think we could do something about like doing teamwork or about like redeeming people. I feel like maybe this is, so while asking one question, I'm answering this one, a move about specific mission types, this is um, purity is such a weird world word, but anyways, move name here. Um, plus one die to engagement when starting a purify mission and some other bonus during it. Pretty straightforward. You're just you're better at doing this kind of job. Um, yeah, something about like bailing each other out is a very like classic Sailor Moon thing. And yeah, doing XP triggers for the crew is something I should get on as well. So other crew types. Um, there's definitely going to be a like super dark edgy madoka style setting where everything is way worse <laughs> um and it'll probably drift uh it'll drift the overall mechanics of the game too so it'll it'll take certain um certain mechanics out of play uh specifically in this setting um when you so i think i'm going to add a section in the playbook that's like what happens when you reach max stress um in the Madoka one, it would be like, you fucking die. <laughs> um, whereas in this one, it would be that you become, like, I've been thinking of calling it that you become eclipsed. Uh, and so it's like you become a baddie and your team has to go and, like, purify you and help you. Um, so essentially, that's the idea with, like, what the spread of playbooks might be. Um I was also thinking of having one that's more in the vibe of like mecha. And so rather than transform into like, um, rather than like costume change and boom, I'm a magical girl. It's like, cool. I summon a giant robot, um, and still like have the same themes, but have you like fight the evil stuff in giant robots, um, kind of more in more of like a power ranger Z kind of vibe. Yeah. Like a bit more in the power ranger style, either we all get into one big robot uh, to fight the baddies or that like 
were kind of in more of a Gundam vibe where everyone has their like signature robot. Um, which I feel like is also like, like Mystical Knight's Ray Earth is kind of one of those things where it's like taking the magical girl format and then also doing this kind of other thing. Um, which is a little bit, yeah, like Power Ranger or whatever, but having this more like techie sci-fi, like kind of style one. Um, I'm, I mean, like I have not watched all the anime in the world, so I'm sure there are like a series that is exactly that. And I just haven't watched it, but I want to do something like that. Um, and so, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be stuff like that, like different, different settings and different tones, different tones is a, is a really, really big part of it. So, um, this is the like super pure, nice, innocent. You get lots of, it's like more forgiving. Uh, the Madoka one is just like, yeah, you fucking die all the time. Um, the Mecha one might be like, oh, like your, your robot can get blown up. And so we have to deal with like rebuilding you a new robot or having this character change, you know, as a result of that. And that would be what happens when you max out on stress. Um, or that like you max out on stress and then enter a state where like, cause yeah, what I want to do with, with this particular playbook is like when you max out on stress, you then like keep fighting, uh, and you're like making rolls. And then if the roll goes wrong, boom, you're out and you become a baddie until that point, you're kind of just like doing stuff, but you're on the brink. And every time you go to take stress, you have to roll again. Um, Stuff like that. So this one's going to have like a darkest self vibe for all the characters, um, which comes up in that way. The other one, the other playbook or crew books might drift the rules away from that or in different, uh, or make those things manifest a little bit differently. Um, yeah, so it's, it's like very, very different from how Blades does crews. Um, the crew book does a lot more uh, in my game, basically, because it's like setting situation tone all that stuff all comes in the playbook and you can like take that out and put in the other stuff uh the big design challenge then is making those like make sense with all the playbooks the like character playbooks but i'm, I'm gonna try it we'll see how far i don't know how much they will drift but i think changing the crew playbooks change core mechanics they like they're like morphs you know like they modify how they function but that the inputs from the character playbooks still feed into those in ways that make sense is the goal. Um, yeah, I mean, having it go into like, right? Like there's there's no end of things that we can do if I can make that kind of structure work, right? Of having like, oh, we can like release new crew playbooks or we can release new character playbooks and they're all kind of modular and can play within each other. Um, I think is a fun like design challenge. Um, it's really also like, ambitious of me to want to do this but here i am trying to do it um so that all being said what do we want to do for this crew right um what is a important like fictional positioning thing for this crew um what do we want to set up these characters to be able to do outside of the normal realm of you know the basic core like you know, like a, an example of this, right, is the cult move of you don't need to be physically present in order to help because you have like telepathy and shit. Um, so in this case, you know, what are what is it that like Sailor Moon style heroes can do uh, that other like magical girl fiction heroes can't do, right? Like what is our what is our signature trope where it's like, oh yeah, they always like do this thing. Um, I mean, it could even be that, like, there's a move that lets you do the whole, like, stress brinksmanship thing. But I kind of like that just being core, core mechanic. Having seen, I think you're probably on the right track of, like, let's design XP triggers first. So we'll come back to this. We don't need to just sit here pondering, right? Um, so I'm just going to write them in down here at the bottom. So, XP. <clears throat> and so let's go back to our <clears throat> blah. Let's go back to the cult here, right? What are the cults? Or well, we'll do a different book just for fun here. So, hawkers, XP triggers, right? One or two XP for these things. 
acquire product supply, execute clandestine covert sales, or secure new territory. So literally do these things, do this type of mission. Um, and so that one is just like a straight, a straight port to our game here, right? Of uh, carry out a successful mission. Honestly, because these are the missions that are available, I mean, these are like missions. We might do other things outside of that. So I want to encourage people to get XP for this, even though they can do a bigger variety of things. Um, successfully carry out a mission. Let me just write this a little differently. So successfully carry out a mission from the cruise list. Right, so do one of these four missions. And you can do that up to two times. And you get XP. Um, contend with challenges above your current station. So this is relating to the like crew tier thing and is about providing a carrot for doing stuff that John wants you to do in the game, right? Which is like be ambitious. Um, bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one. This is about playing to type. So we've decided what we're about. And then, you know, this is a thing where we reward the players for for following through on their commitment to be about a certain thing. Um, so that one again ports really easily because we know we know what our crew is about. Our crew is about this stuff over here, right? Um, and so this also means that the last trigger, which is reflect the like inner nature conflicts of the crew, etc., like. That's all this stuff here. Um, and so I think instead of like contend with challenges above our station, um, I think it's going to be, I want to reward the, the crew for like doing things that address the, um, all this like dark agenda shit. So something that directly confronts the oppression of the setting. Um, and then, so this is number one. Number two is the, if we were to like generally categorize this, this is like challenges above your station. Which in this game, I think really means like confront the oppression as established. So it's essentially a reward for like staying focused on what the game is supposed to be about. And then this one is for playing to type, right? Because this is the um, reputation, reputation XP. So for us, what that actually means is um, or well, let's do the last one first because this is the inner nature or inner conflict, essential nature of the crew, goals, drives. Um, this is like an, an embodiment oriented one. So um, we already reward players at the player level for doing their role, which is something they've chosen from the crew sheet. Um, and then we also want to reward the crew for embodying as a like whole the crew embodying this shit that it's supposed to be about so when you show the how does john word it john is very good at writing rules express the goals drives yeah okay cool so let's go with that word of express express the Essential nature, origin, right? Because we've got we've got all these prompts, and so we really want to we want to call back to those, right? Um, 
we don't say a lot about so I think yeah this one of like destiny right Let's see essential nature origin or destiny of the crew I don't know if I want to say ultimate destiny I'm just gonna say destiny so destiny being the like what are we trying to accomplish right and like showing that and showing us like talking keeping that in the in the forefront um because this, this is essentially their objective right like what they are trying to accomplish um we might want to split these maybe your destiny is like your rep equivalent because this is like how you go about doing things mm. Really, what, so what I'm feeling right now is that reputation in Blades is about how your crew goes about doing stuff. Because if you have a reputation for being murderous bastards, then that means you're going to go murder people. If you have a reputation for being ambitious, it means you're going to, you're not just going to steal things, you're going to steal things from like really, you know, you're going to steal really famous things or really valuable things. Um, and so having a section in here where we talk about like how your characters go about doing stuff might be relevant like a methods section or something something that informs because we've got the goal but then it's like how do you how are you going to get that thing is very important what happens when they win what happens when we win how does it end what are we after these are all interesting questions um and then like but I mean, here's the thing is we kind of already know, we know functionally how we're going to do it, right? Because we're going to do it by doing these things. But then it's like the color of how we do those. Because yeah, like effectively all blade scores are the same as Halfwing is see saying. Um, and so it's more, it's, and like all of these are all just scores. Um, so it's beyond just like doing these things in a perfunctory way. It's about doing them in a manner that embodies what the crew is supposed to be about. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm in, appreciating all of the like analysis of like, what do those things from Blades really mean too, right? Um, I don't know, Sierra Mira. It's a strange place. Is it that the place is strange? Or is it that it's a strange place to seek answers? I don't know. Um, it's one of those things where it is mostly there to be evocative. Um, it's not uh, an overly specific. It's not like capital S, strange place. Sorry, capital S, capital P, strange place. Um, so... We might just also have less XP triggers, although I think the four is a good number. Keeps us on track in terms of like the numbers game of progression. So yeah, this is more about Hmm. What is this one really about? I mean, a lot of these, so a lot of the Blades ones, you know, it's like I do a thing and I could just, I could spin it as being a trigger for like three out of the four different options, you know? Like, right, we've got this whole like bolster your crew's reputation the way that I bolster my crew's reputation might also express the goals of the crew or be about the essential nature of the crew, right? Like a lot of these things are kind of vaguely synonymous. Contend with challenges above your station. Anytime you're a tier one crew is basically like do early in the game of blades in the grand progression of the crew contend with challenges above your station is like do anything, right? Just like do a thing at all. And this gives you XP. This one is like do something from this subset and you get XP, these are both like very similar. They're just about like doing stuff, and then this is about like how you do it.
but also like I'm totally fine with that. We're just gonna give you a bunch of XP. It's whatever. I want to get. I want to use these as a way to guide how people think about stuff uh, when they're playing the game. So they, I want to tell them, hey, these are things that I, the designer of this game, want you to do, and you will get. I, I you know that because I will give you XP for doing them. Um. And if people don't do them and they read this list, at the end of the day, they're like, huh, we didn't do that. Maybe next time we'll do that. You know, that's kind of what these XP lists are about, in a way. Um, so it, it's okay for there to be some overlap, I think is what I'm getting at. And what, what I'm, this is like my read on John's design, which I'm just trying to like riff on. So I want to be, you know, in line with what he was doing. Um... Right now I'm mostly running, so at least, so here's the thing, uh, Kira Darkness asks, is the way the public views the group of magical girls part of the mechanics yet? So no, but I think it would be interesting to have a crew book where it did. Uh, someone mentioned doing like an idol, like kind of thing where everyone is, you know, you have this like, you're famous as idols and maybe like everyone knows that the idols also go and like fight monsters and then you also do concerts. Um, in which case we could have a like fame slash like heat like mechanic that we could bring back in. Um, I like the idea of having the crew books take a bunch of like blades crew level stuff and then like chop it up and spread it out amongst them because like the Madoka style playbook could have like a tier thing um, and there could be other like magical girl squads that you're like competing with, right? That could totally be part of the setting and be something that is interesting there. In which case, we would keep the tier and whatnot rules and bring those in. We might have one where the magical girls are uh, like more directly fighting the government, or where they're famous, and we might take some kind of like heat type rules uh, and keep those, and that we can we can partition out um, the blades mechanics across multiple different crew types and we kind of pick and choose what we want to keep for the different ones right and then in sailor moon is not at all about any of those things and so we just want to we want to set those mechanics aside um which i think is neat and and like great that the game you know just like how in burning wheel we have the hub and we have the spokes right like the game can include a wide range of mechanics and then we can play only with a subset of them depending on what we're trying to do That being said, if we you know if we pull too much out of the game, the game falls to pieces, right? There's a bunch of stuff in Blades about like the whole like reputation tier, turf, blah 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 game. That whole mechanical bit, if you pull out too many portions of it, then the ones that remain become unusable because they aren't connected to anything. They don't really make sense. Um, so there's a, a balancing act there of like how much to keep and what to keep. Um, so. Hmm? So confront the, the oppression as established and successfully carry out a mission. Here's a, here's a thing, that, a distinction that we can make inside my game that is interesting. Is that this one, right, when we carry out missions, a lot of the times we're doing this as our like transformed magical selves. Confronting the oppression is often, well, it's, it's done as both. Right? As our mundane selves, we still confront the oppression. So if we go through a session where we haven't transformed at all, we could still get credit for this one, even though we didn't do a mission. Um, and that's, I think, interesting as well, that this one is about... This one is more likely to happen when you're not transformed. This one is more likely to happen when you are transformed. I could see us doing missions where we don't end up transforming, and that's fine too. But like, because the darkness permeates the world and is reflected in the actions of regular like mundane characters... Um, who are being shitty to us in our day-to-day -day lives, right? This one, this one matters a lot. Did I spell oppression wrong? Yeah, I did. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, this word doesn't look right. And then I look over in chat, and someone's like, you spelled that wrong. It's great. Oh, and uh, Halfwing, I see your message. I will get on that. And yeah, Sierra Mirror is saying there's like a magical girl f show where they actually like fight each other. Um, and yeah, I think like having having the like really edgy 
uh, crew, like, you know, playbook, play set. I'm, I'm thinking of them as, like, play sets. So it's like, you have this crew book, and you have, like, maybe, like, these character archetypes. And boom, that's, like, a play set. And you can expand on them a little bit, but this is, like, the core of it. And, yeah, having one where it was the, like, really gnarly, like, you know, permadeath... Lots of competition, more closer to Blade's Magical Girl setting would be super rad, and I would love to have that playset coexist with this one, which is a lot more optimistic. Um, and to be able to, like, rather than when you come into a game and you're like, I want to play this game, but I want to, like, drift the tone this way, and the rules are, like, kind of half there for you and half not, um, which is an experience I've had in the past, I think it's really neat to be like, there's a dial on this game and we can shift it between one and the other. So like, yeah, I'm like so interested in trying to make that work. I feel like it's also a challenge that is above what I can handle, but I'm going to, you know, I'm like trying to do it anyways, basically. Um, links and XP are like separate reward loops that I want to keep distinct. Um, Sith Master, I think, I think we need to keep them separate. Thanks, Elf. Thanks for your encouragement. Don't just don't just come in here and troll me, God. Um. So this last one that I'm trying to really think of, like, what the fuck do I put in here? Is this whole like reputation equivalent one? And I feel like in Blades, in my experience of playing it, this one's been kind of a throwaway. Um, like. Which I'm not saying like it's a bad mechanic or it's a bad design. I'm saying like we are not playing into this, which means something probably that we have made like an error. Um. So I'm like, eh, I I feel like I don't understand this one well enough to really like design a swap for it. Hmm. Maybe we'll just have one that's like uncover or like explore the nature of the darkness. Because maybe I want to drift the game. The game isn't about your rep, right? Like the game is about what you're fighting. And so maybe rewarding the players for like asking questions and getting into the grit of like what is this about and letting letting them have something push them to be fans of the MC's shit, essentially, right? Uh, could be fun. I'm gonna put this in for now, see how, that, see how it plays. Yeah, because like the whole rep thing is just like not relevant for this uh, crew type. It might be relevant in that whole like magical girl competition, you know, battling each other thing. I think then it's super relevant. Um, but here it is not something we need. Um, oh no no no! Mag has the Mag has the fucking play right here. Something about how you inspire people as magical girls. Your rep would be hopeful, and you give people hope. Your rep could be determined. I mean, I don't like the idea of reputation in it, but I really like this idea of like you know doing stuff for the people like that's so it feels so obvious now that i think of it um because yeah we're all about we want to fucking save the people you know that's what we're here to do um so it's like explore the nature of the darkness and Redeem those who have fallen. Boom. Gotta save the people. Confront the oppression as established. And comfort those who suffer. Boom. Got a little bit poetic with it. And yeah, like Max saying, yeah, like rep just being a stand in word. But yeah, like that's that's essentially what we're about, right? Like so Cool. I am. Thank you, Mag. You're. You're the shit. You're awesome. I'm feeling good about this XP trigger list. Um, I'm running low on time, 
So I'm gonna like revisit this down the line, but we we collectively uh, did some cool stuff today. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Comedian Crow, and you can keep an eye on there for like all the shit I'm doing. I try to promote it on Twitter a little bit. So like, you know, before I go live with whatever show on whatever channel, I'll pop a thing up there. Um, and it's a good place to look. If you're interested in playtesting this, I will definitely be spamming the crap out of my Twitter with like playtest related info for everyone. Um, so if you're interested in playing this game, you're going to want to look at my Twitter. Uh, you can also check out my YouTube channel, uh, which is the link is in my Twitter profile as well as my Patreon. Um, people who support me on Patreon get to be in the credits for this game and get to know that they helped me not starve to death while trying to make it. So if that's something that interests you, you can support me on Patreon. I will drop a link in the chat to those places. Um, and I'm trying to think of what the next thing I'm going to do. Probably, well, I'm going to be streaming on Distracted Elf's channel tonight. Uh, I think we're going to play some League of Legends or something awful like that. Um, so you can come listen to me be really salty about how it's not Dota. Um, and then uh, on Monday, you can watch me on Distracted Elf's channel. We're playing Blades in the Dark. Um, I'm currently MCing, although I was playing in the first season, so we're doing like a rotating MC role. Uh, there's all kinds of weird occult shit that's starting to happen now with the crew ever since uh, Elf's new character came along, who is a um, whisper. Uh, and there's like some tension within the crew around like demon stuff, and it's all pretty cool. Uh, so you can check that out. Anyways. Stay tuned for more of this uh, on Monday as well, and I'll see you all then.